All right, this is a MOSFET current limiting uh, circuit I came up with that I'd like to just describe, let you check it out. Well, basically, um, I'm working with a 40 volt supply and I want my uh, current limit to be less than or equal to or a max of 1.4 amps. Now, the, the gist of this circuit is all centered around this MOSFET, ob obviously. It's a P-channel MOSFET and I've got it operating as a voltage controlled resistance source. So given that obviously as as the current starts to approach 1.4 amps and increases or goes beyond that value this resistance is going to increase which will in turn decrease the voltage across this load and limit the current to approximately 1.4 amps all right so this rf uh, 5210 has a vgs of max i'm sorry of plus or minus 20 volts it has a rds on uh, I believe 0 0.06 ohms at minus 10 volts. Uh, this minus 10 volts, that's that's pretty important. Um, the first thing is a little diversion here. This minus, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you don't, the, the minus here doesn't mean that you have to apply a negative voltage to the gate here. All this is saying is that the gate is um, lower, the voltage is lower, the potential is lower than what's at the source. So for example, if I had 40 volts here at the source and 30 volts here at the gate, then I would have V sub gate minus V sub source, which is equal to 30 minus 40, which is equal to minus 10 volts. That's all that's saying. All right, so in general, when we're not in a current limiting mode, uh, the, the load is large enough so that we're not having to limit our current. Uh, obviously current's gonna flow through this path here, down through our load and <clears throat> return through ground. Um, what we want to ensure is so that we don't mess with mess with or limit this current uh, until we reach our current limit value is we want this uh, MOSFET to be fully on. Um, the way we accomplish that is by um, this, this little bias circuit right here. Um, if you go through the algebra, or actually let me just say, state that, that doing this we want to ensure to, that it's fully on. We want, want the uh, V sub GS to be at least minus 10 volts, and we really want it to be uh, a little bit lower than that, <clears throat> just to ensure that this guy is fully on. But at the same time, we don't want to exceed this minus 20 volts, or we'll actually destroy this device. So if you go through some algebra here, what you come up with is R sub 2 has to be greater than or equal to, or I'm sorry, greater than uh, 1 third R sub 3. The uh, website link that I have, you can go there, and I, I go through all the der derivations for all of this in, in a lot more detail and show all of the equations. And that, uh, that URL will also show up at the end of this video. So uh, anyway, in this case, if we call this V sub G, this value, this voltage right here, then um, this V sub G is 27.5 volts. So that's really easy uh, to come up with just by looking at this little piece right here, which is simply a, a voltage divider, right? So we get V sub G is equal to 40 times R sub 3 over R sub 2 plus R sub 3 and that's equal to 27.5 volts. Now again that's the gate voltage, that's the voltage from this point to ground. What we're actually interested in looking at is the V sub GS. So the V sub GS is going to be our 27.5 volts minus 40 volts which is equal to minus 12.5 volts. And again, this is a good value because it's well below what's gonna be required to turn this uh, MOSFET fully on and make the resistance as small as possible without getting anywhere near this maximum uh, gate to source voltage. All right, so that's what happens when everything's working normal with a, with a small load and we're not anywhere near our current limit. Now, what we wanna look at now is as we start to approach this uh, current uh, limit value. So this I sub L here, I guess I should label that, this is I sub L. As I sub L comes through here, this sensing uh, resistor is going to come into play. Um, and we know that the voltage drop here is going to be given by Ohm's law, and it's just going to be um, I sub L times R1. So if we look at the base voltage here, we know that V sub B is going to be equal to our 40 volts minus our voltage drop here, which is I1 R1. Now, as the current starts to increase, um, this V sub B is going to become, become smaller. Since the uh, turn on value for this emitter to base uh, junction is approximately 0.7 volts, that's what I'm working with. That can vary a little bit, but for our purposes, we're going to use 0.7 volts. <clears throat> 
that, that would indicate that at 0.7 volts we want this thing uh, to turn on and start conducting and start limiting the current. So we can just solve for that real simple here. We just have uh, 40 volts minus um, 1.4 times 0.5. That's going to be equal to 40 volts minus 0.7. That's our 0.7. So that's going to be equal to 39.3 volts. So indeed at 1.4 amps this uh, transistor is going to start to conduct. Alright, so the next thing we need to look at is um, as this guy starts to conduct, what's actually happening? Well, as it starts to conduct, we're obviously going to get uh, some collector current flowing, we'll call I sub C. We already have some current flowing here, we'll just call this I bias. So V sub G here is going to be equal to um, I bias, right, plus I sub C times, in this case, R sub 3, R33K. So obviously, as our I sub C begins to increase, that's going to increase our V sub G. Well, if our V sub G increases, then that's going to actually decrease our V sub GS. So if we decrease our V sub GS, we in turn start to increase the resistance here, which starts to decrease the voltage across our load, which in turn is going to limit our current to 1.4 amps. And again, you can go to the website and see a little more detailed description of what's going on in here. Um, the only other thing worth mentioning here is uh, this little circuit uh, and really all this is providing is an overcurrent indicator. Um, we have the same 3906 uh, configuration working across a sense resistor as that gets to as that drop gets to 0.7 volts then this is going to conduct when this conducts it's going to uh, turn on this NPN transistor which is going to turn on this LED and indicate that we have an overflow condition. Uh, one point I should mention here is, is this guy. I didn't choose a 2N3904 because I think the uh, uh, V sub CE max, or I know, for the 3904 is equal to 40 volts. And even with this diode drop here, the collector to emitter voltage here is, is really, really close to 40 volts. And it's probably best not to use this. The uh, V sub CE max for this 4923 is equal to 60 volts, which that gives us a, a real good safety margin. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is this guy has to be heat sunk, or you need to place a heat sunk on it, heat sink, heat sunk, whatever. You need to make sure that the, you have a heat sink for this guy. Um, the, the reason being, if you take the worst case here, um, you could have 1.4 amps and 40 volts across this guy. And if that's true, then you got, you know, V times I is going to give you power. So you got 40 times 1.4 is going to be equal to 56 watts. That's a lot of power that you got to dissipate and you need to make certain that you have a, a heat sink here. Um, and a couple of other things here, the uh, maximum uh, drain to source voltage for this device is minus 100 volts and we're well within that limit with our, our 40 volts here. And it does say that it has a maximum power dissipation of 200 watts. Uh, I don't believe I would attempt to drive the device that high but again since we're limited to 56 watts and you're going to heat sink this guy very well uh, we should be okay all right that's about it uh, one more time if you want to go into more detail about how all this works you can go to my website and check it out and i'm about to show you a video where i've got this up on the bench and just basically showing how it works appreciate it all right here i've got the circuit up on the breadboard um, basically what i have here this is a 50 ohm pot and then I've got an additional 20 ohms in series. Uh, basically, this thing is only 25 watts, so these resistors are just uh, forcing this guy to be as low as possible when I'm at my current limit. Um, this voltmeter is showing you the gate voltage, and then of course you have the supply voltage and the current. So by decreasing uh, the load resistance, of course, we would expect the uh, load current to go up. So doing that, we can see that the load current continues to increase. We still have our same gate voltage. If we continue to increase, we should start to see the gate voltage increase as we get near our current limit. There we see it going up. And finally, you can see that the current limit is about 1.36 amps. That's close to our 1.4 amps, so that's pretty good. And again, if we turn it back down, you should see the gate voltage drop back down showing that it's not in a current limit mode. Um, the only other thing is this uh, indicator LED. That's actually gonna come on a little bit before um, 
we go into our total current limit and that's just because of the current flowing through that LED. Um, I could probably make that more precise but I think it's good enough. There you can see it's starting to get bright and it's at its brightest when we are in our current limit mode. Well, and that's about it.